Well, hello guys. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. and Welcome back to a little mini series that we're gonna be doing on the channel. Uh, this has been requested by you guys. So this series is titled, So You Wanna Get Into Turbines. First video, which is this one, is all about the equipment. So stay tuned, and we'll get into the equipment of getting involved in turbine aircraft. All right guys, so we're gonna dismantle this, uh, this stack of stuff here and I will preface this with, this is my list. I'm sure there's gonna be lots of people that think there should be more on the list or maybe less on the list. But this is my list of things that I thought of. If you're getting into turbines, you will probably need or you may need going forward. So let's get into this list. So. Number one thing on my list is a radio system. So there are so many radio systems out there. I'm a fan of JR. This is the 28X radio. The new flagship radio that's replacing this one is due out very, very soon. But this is my radio that I use. Uh, for years I use Spectrum and uh, for about five years now I've been using JR stuff. So uh, great radio. You really never run out of channels with something like this. If you're using a radio system with a lower amount of channels, like let's say a Spectrum DX8, a DX12, and you're trying to set up a turbine or jet aircraft, you're probably gonna find that you're gonna be running out of channels. The 12 channel, you'll probably be okay for most things, but something like uh, any of the brand new high-end radio systems, you really almost have unlimited channels. So that's number one in my equipment. Uh, first thing I wrote down on my list, the radio. All right, second thing on my list that I didn't bring because it's out in my trailer and it's minus a lot right now and I don't want to go get it, but you need a fire extinguisher. So you want a decent sized CO2 fire extinguisher. It should be with you when you're starting up the aircraft. It should be on the side of the field. Depends on what country you're in as far as regulations go. So I have a five pound CO2 fire extinguisher. Uh, it's, it's light, easy to move around, easy to transport and um, works well. I have had to use it once for uh, somebody else's aircraft that went down and you need a good fire extinguisher. So don't skimp out on that. You also don't wanna use a powder fire extinguisher. So something that is uh, like an ABC fire extinguisher that when you, when you use it or discharge it, it sprays powder. That's gonna damage your aircraft, gonna damage all the components if you have to use it. So that is number two on my list and that is a decent CO2 fire extinguisher. Now number three on my list because right behind a fire extinguisher is my blower. So the blower, what's this used for? Well, in a lot of cases, you don't need to use your fire extinguisher, just getting air moving through the airplane, through the pipe, through the turbine is enough. I do use this when I'm cooling down my turbines or my aircraft. Uh, it helps to save battery and, and whatnot, it helps to get air moving. But uh, the primary reason for this is I will, when I start my aircraft up, I'll have this beside me, my fire extinguisher beside me, and if I do get a hot start or something kind of goes wrong, generally your blower can take care of it for you. So that's the next thing on my list is a blower. All right guys, next thing on my list is a fuel system. So since I started in turbine aircraft, I have had a Jersey modeler fuel system. So my very first turbine, I think I bought in about 2010 or 2011, I believe, maybe 10, maybe nine, I can't remember. Anyways, one of the very first things I did was I bought a Jersey modeler uh, fuel jug. I actually just gave away that fuel jug to a friend uh, this year. It has served me for about 10 years worked completely fine. So I do recommend the Jersey Modeler fuel jugs. I'm actually a dealer, so you can check out my website 
It's listed down below in the description, but if you buy good equipment, you will never have to replace it or it's gonna last you for a long time and you may replace it when you want to. I actually bought this one because it's got more volume, flying bigger aircraft now, and uh, this is the one of the new nicer ones that uh, they've made for a while, but Anyways, get yourself a nice fuel system. There are other options out there. There are do-it-yourself uh, ideas that you can come up with. I've done it myself too for my, my other uh, airplanes sometimes, buying an electric fuel pump and stuff like that. There are lots of options, but having a good fuel jug is important because getting fuel in your planes means that you can fly. If your fuel jug doesn't get fuel in your planes, you're not gonna be flying. Just a little side note for you guys, there are gonna be more videos that revolve around so you wanna get into turbines. We're gonna talk about the planes, uh, the flying, uh, the maintenance. If you guys have any other suggestions for entire video topics revolving around so you wanna get into turbines, list in the comments down below and uh, I'll think about your suggestions and possibly do a video on them focused around this. All right guys, next thing is a, an air pump. Now, most of the new aircraft that are out there are gonna be electric gear, electric retracts, stuff like that. But if you're buying an older aircraft, if you're buying uh, even large scale aircraft, you'll need an air pump. Now, this is one of those things that this was the very first air pump I bought. I've actually bought new ones because I wanted something that was better, uh, what I thought was better, and uh, this thing refuses to die, knock on wood, but uh, it's one we get at our uh, local hardware store, it's called Canadian Tire. Uh, if you're down in the US, I don't know what the equivalent is. This is so old that they don't make it anymore, they make new ones every single year, but uh, basically an air pump, you gotta get air into your, your retracts, air into your aircraft, you'll need an air pump. All right guys, next thing on the list is a battery charger. Now, uh, I'm not promoting Hyperion chargers or anything like that. I just happen to use their chargers and have for a long time and they work great. So this is my uh, 720i Super Duo charger. Uh, works well, but you need a good solid charger in order to top up your batteries and charge your batteries so you can continue to fly your aircraft. So get yourself a good battery charger, something that's compatible with all the different types of batteries that you're going to be using and something that will charge your batteries fairly quickly. The reason I use this one is it works for all my turbine aircraft. I can also charge uh, high discharge LiPo batteries like for my helicopter that's in the background uh, quite quickly. So that's why I use this guy and uh, that's it, battery charger. All right, next thing you should get is some ear protection or make sure you have ear protection. Now, the electronic ones are awesome. These guys here, you can turn them on and they pick up noise uh, and sounds and stuff and then they, they shut off when there's a loud noise. I like to use these ones because then you can have them on and you can actually hear your engine starting and when it gets too loud, then it, uh, it mutes the sound. So, But you don't need to go to something like this you can use just, you know, standard run-of-the-mill uh, earplugs, right? That you just pop in place and they've got a string on them or regular ones or whatever you can find, whatever you can get. But protect your ears. Uh, you need to make sure that you're wearing ear protection when you start up your turbine engines. All right. This one is made it on my list. I almost didn't put it on the list, but I decided to keep it on the list. So this is a taxi tank. So if you're not into turbines or you're new into turbines, uh, there's a vent fitting coming out of your airframe. These are the vent fittings I use. They come from DreamWorks and they've got a nice little plug. So you can unthread the plug and this sits on the outside of your aircraft. Okay, so it's got a little hole in there and it's threaded so that plug goes in and it's a high flow fitting so you can put like eight millimeter Festo tubing on there or big Tigon tubing, whatever you're using. 
Coolest thing about this fitting is the taxi tank just plugs in. It's got little O-rings on there and you just unplug it when you're ready to fly. So if you don't know what a taxi tank is for, basically you hook this up to the vent fitting on your plane and you can have some fuel in here. The reason this is important is I'd like to always use a taxi tank now because it keeps your fuel usage consistent. So if you don't use a taxi tank, you start your aircraft up, you're powering your aircraft up, maybe you take a little bit longer to, to get out to the runway and then you take off. Now you've used, I don't know, 10% of your fuel tank, you've got your timer set for a certain amount of time. You know, you should have enough uh, spare extra time built in, but if you're using a taxi tank, when you're ready to, to taxi out to the runway, you will unplug this or when you're on the runway and you're always using the same amount of fuel-ish um, or you know how much you're using. So if you have your timer set for six minutes and 30 seconds, uh, this helps with that. So the re other reason to use a taxi tank is to prevent spills. So when you plug this into your vent fitting and your tank is full, the fuel is going to come out of this line, go into the taxi tank, and that prevents getting fuel on the runway, on the grass, on the asphalt, whatever you fly off of, and uh, keeps the site cleaner. So in my opinion, taxi tank, great thing to use. All right, guys, the last thing that made it onto my list is tools. Okay, so this is my Milwaukee Packout uh, part of the system that I use. So I actually use the pack out boxes because I bring all my spare parts with me when I go to the field uh, for myself and for other people and things like that. But my toolbox, I started using this pack out box about two years ago. I absolutely love it. Now this goes in my trailer in a specific spot, but this is also where I keep all of my RC tools. So when, at the end of the day, I basically take this out of my plane trailer, it comes into my shop and actually goes on a mobile cart and I've got all of my tools in here so I always know where they are, I always know where they are in the box, but you need to have tools, I'm not promoting the box, I'm promoting the tools, you need to have tools to be able to fix your plane, to put your plane together, to, um, to do everything with your plane. So. Get a decent set of tools, start adding to it as you gain more experience in the hobby. Tools are important. All right guys, and that is everything for the So You Want to Get Into Turbines Equipment video. Just want to give a quick shout out to everybody who has donated to the Shop Build Fund. We are crowdfunding to help out building the new shop, Everybody here has donated something, whether it's big or small. So we thank you guys for your donations and all of that money is gonna to go towards building a new shop. So that's it for this section, guys. Next episode will probably be focused around aircraft. So keep an eye out for that. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you're not subscribed already. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.